Hello everybody. In this screencast, we're going to solve evaluation three, which mainly focused on making REST APIs and consuming this data, parsing it and using it. All right. So let's have a look at the documentation of the app, uh, of uh, the requirements here. So basically, this is the first screen that shows up. It's a fragment. And uh, there is an API that we're going to call and that API receives uh, a list of gift lists, right? And each gift list is composed of products or items that are under that gift list. And then, so this is going to be a recycler view and you should be able to delete. So there is another API function, which any API call to delete, we'll look at that. And if you look at the Postman, here's the Postman that's provided. There's a login, this login and sign up is already implemented. So let's say I sign up. Um, so what I'm going to do is let me sign up as create a new account. So this is the app. I ran it. Let's say, for example, this is uh, Bob uh, Smith and I'll say Bob at Bob.com Bob.com and the password I'll have test one, two, three, just to test here. And here we are. So I'm logged in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to log in in Postman using that accounts that I just created. So it's Bob and Bob at Bob.com and click on send and basically it gives me uh, a token. So I'm interested in this token and now I'm going to call the gift lists. So in the header there is a token that is going to be used and that is indicated in the documentation. So here is the token, right? I pasted my token here save that call the api and it says you have nothing good so now you see here there is new and new uh, gift list new enables you to create a uh, gift list so what i'm going to do is i'm going to paste my header here save it in the body uh, it's creating some product ids so basically these are the product ids so if you go to gift list products also in the header i would like to set up here it is save click on send and you're getting the product. So these are the products. Let's say we add this product and the other product. So basically in order to add them, if you go to gift list new, basically all what you're doing is just adding uh, gift lists, the IDs of the products. So let's say we go in and do control V. This is the first product and I'm going to add also the other product. Here is the other product. Okay. Two products, comma, the second product and let's say I paste it again. So I'm adding that product twice, save and I'm going to click on send and it says, okay. So when I go back to gift lists and I click on send and I can see that I have a list, the list is called test list. And then under it, there are two items. Okay. This is the first item and the second item. The first item is count is one. The second item, the count is two. All right, good. So we're able to uh, create a list. So now what I would like to do is in the first screen, uh, I'll just zone in and I will focus on making an API call to uh, to get this gift list. All right. So here's the gift list. This is the URL. And looking at it, I'm going to get a JSON that looks something like what we see in front of us. And this is a JSON object. And then inside it, there is a status variable. I'm not interested in it. I'm interested in lists. And you see each list, this is one list, right? You can have multiple lists. Like if I go to gift list new and let's say I go in and create uh, another gift list that has three products. Here's an, a third product. There it is. And here's the third product. And I click on send. Now when I go back and click on send and you can see here is the first gift list. This is the second gift list. So we see the gift list is composed of uh, this is if we create classes for each one of them. So basically we'll create a, a, a class to represent a gift list and the gift list has a gift list ID and it has a name. In addition to that, there are items which are the products under the gift list and each item is an object by itself. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and create, let's say, a package, call it models. And then under that, I'm going to create two classes. The first class, I'm going to call it the gift list gift list class and then uh, okay the gift class class and then secondly I'm gonna add also a product class product all right so basically now I have a gift list and a product now, what I'm going to in include in the gift list is possibly these so basically I can do something like this I can copy this and here is my gift list is gonna have these items so basically there is a string 
string uh, GID and string name, right? And then I'll have a list, array list of products, an array list of product, and I'll call them items just to use the same naming that is there. I don't have to use the same naming unless I'm using the JSON library. Now, what is inside the product? Here is the product. That's what's inside the product. So a product has, I just copy this and paste it so that I don't make mistakes. Here it is. It has the product ID as a string. The name is a string. The count is a number. So when um, um, the, the item, pro, uh, the URL, image URL is also a string. Now, price per item, uh, if you go and look at the documentation, it says that here you would like to calculate the total price, the total cost of this gift list, which is uh, the number of item uh, is the count of each item multiplied by the price per item summed over all the items in the list. So basically here we would like to instead, even though the price per item is indicated as a string, I would like to use it as a double. All right. So I'll go here, double uh, price per item and integer count. All right. So basically I have all what I need to be able to parse. Good. So now I'm going to assume that I I'll have an empty constructor. Let's create an empty constructor. In addition to that, I'm going to create a constructor that uh, receives a JSON object. Okay, I'll call it JSON, right? Here is that. And basically, as it receives, it's going to receive this JSON object, right? And what I'm going to do is I know that uh, this dot JSON dot uh, GID is equal to this. And then also the name, I can get it like this. And then I need to loop. So basically, I could say, for example, uh, array uh, JSON array you see this is a JSON array the items is a JSON array because it starts with a square bracket if you go back here it starts with a square bracket so it's a JSON array right so this items is a JSON array and I'll call it uh, JSON array uh, items equals uh, JSON get me the array and then I'm going to loop for I and here it's going to be the JSON array of items dot length Right, so now here we're getting them and then I will get a JSON object I'll call it a JSON object and I'm going to call it uh, from the JSON array of items get me a JSON object at index i so what I'm going to do is I'm going to parse the product so basically the same thing here I'm going to create a constructor here is that and I'm going to create an empty constructor for the product and in addition to that I'm going to create a constructor that is going to accept the JSON object same story and basically here I will just do something like this I'm gonna get the the product ID I'm getting the product ID I'm getting the name as a string I'm getting the price per item as a double and we'll we'll fix that in a little bit but then the image URL is a string and then there is an integer for the count so now how I'm going to do this I'm going to get it as a string as a string and then I'm going to do a double uh, double dot value of and I am going to do something like this and of course, in order to do this, you know that you have to do a try catch block because this can uh, trigger an exception. And this is the number format exception. You know, that's something we discussed before. We can print to stat grace if you want, but here we are. All right, here we are. And then basically, if the exception happens, I could they say it's the price per item uh, equal to 0, 0.0, something like that, just to say that it's zero, right? So, and then the count is an integer because you see here the count is an integer, and so we're good to go. So, we, we are done actually with the parsing. And I'm done with the parsing. If you go back here, I'm going to go in and say um, uh, product, uh, product equal to new product, and then items.add, and so on. So, now in order to do the add, I have to make sure it's initialized. So, I'll go say new array list, and it's added. So we're good to go. I am able, I don't need this anymore, but I'm able to parse. I have the gift list and so on. So I have now the gift list. I structured the data such that there is a gift list class and inside it, there is an array of items and so on. Now, if I'm going to also do uh, these values in order to get the number of items and the, um, the, the total cost, what I could do is I can do this here. I'm already looping over them here, right? So now let's do this. So what I'm going to do is... Um, it set up some getters and setters, right? So the getters and setters, let me just go here. Getters and setters. Uh, sorry. Getters and setters, and I'm going to select all of them. Here's that. So I have the getters and setters for the product. Similarly, I just set up some getters and setters for the, uh, the gift list. All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just say uh, create a double. I call it, for example, the uh, total total cost total cost 
uh, or I can have it even as a double here. Say for example, double total uh, cost. Here it is, and then I'll have a, uh, an integer total count. All right. So basically, these are initialized at zeros just to start with. Okay. And similarly here, they are also going to be initialized at zeros. All right. Okay. So here we are, and then uh, the total cost. Let's say uh, we'll we'll do this here. Oops. So we'll say total cost uh, this dot total cost equal to 0, 0.0 this dot total count count equal to i don't need to do that here i already initialized it up here but anyhow and then when i'm parsing i'm going to just do the math so basically the math is done very simply so basically the um, number of items uh, is basically uh, not going to be the length of items but it's going to be the count for the item uh, so basically so we'll say this dot total count equal total count uh, this dot total count total count plus uh, the product dot get count okay so then we added it here okay and similarly the this dot total cost uh, is equal to uh, this dot total cost where we also get the count of the product multiplied by the get get price per item right so something like that and we're able to get the total count so i have the total count total uh, Cost, all of that stuff is done here, and then also let's add a getter and setter for it, and we're good to go. So I have now the total cost and the total count done. So I'm already done with the parsing of the product and the gift list. All right, good. So now we're good here. Now, in order to get this to to execute, I need the I need to be able in order to make this call, I need a URL and I need to know if it doesn't receive any parameters. If you look, it does not receive any parameters. The only parameter that it receives is a header which looks something like this which is bearer space token right okay good so now let's go to that uh gift list fragment and look at it so basically i know i'm going to need an array list of gift lists array list of gift list an array list of gift lists okay and i got it called gift lists and so on so i have my gift lists already set up now what I'm going to do is just create a function that I'm going to call to get these gift lists. Okay, so in order to do that, I am going to do that somewhere here. Create a function, uh, private void get gift gift lists. Here it is, and then basically I need to uh, do uh, OK HTTP connection to so do to do the OK HTTP stuff, and so on. Now this is a get. Is it a get request or a post request? It's a get request. You see here, it is a get request and uh what we're going to do is all right so we go here and i'm going to open new window and i'm going to say okay http and here it is and in the okay http look at it here and make it a little bigger so that we could see the menu at the top here it is and i'm gonna go recipes okay good now we're gonna set up the client here's that here's this here here's my client and import things import it here and then similarly, I'm going to create a request. Here's the request. All right. And that's a get request. Here's that. And we're good to go. So now we have the request set up. Now I can look at the recipes and see how to add headers, accessing headers. You see here, Java. And here's a header. And I'm interested in add header. Um, all right. Or I can set up a header like this. I have one header, so I can do something, add header. And so on. So I am going to uh, use this approach, okay? All right, so here it is. Add header. My header is what is authorization. So I'm going to copy it from here so I don't make any mistakes. Control C and Control V. It's an authorization header. And then here is what it looks like. It's bearer space token, right? So here it is. You see here bearer space token. So here is my the bearer part of it, space, and then plus M token, which is the token that's being sent here. You see here, for example, there's a token that's going to be sent, and this is the authorization token, right? Okay, good. So we have the token. We can make the request. Let's make the request. This is the URL, and we're good to go. So we have the request set up. Now we can just do client dot new call, and we pass it the request dot in queue, and this is all boilerplate. We did this before. New uh, new callback, and we're good here. We have the callback dot print text trace here and then similarly here we just get uh, we check to see if the response is successful we get the body and i'm just going to print the body just to see where i am okay 
now I need to call this when do I call it I call it here I'll call it here okay on create on view created and let me run that now it's running the app I look at the look at and let's do here it is demo did I do any what did I call it here it's out I will do log.d there it is actually we got it here you see here it's coming in here is the uh, we are getting the we are getting the response to show in look at which is great right so I don't need this anymore okay how to get rid of this one um, hmm Uh, let's see oh, it's great uh, all right let's close this look at look at again and here it is okay good so now we have look at and we are able to get the data that's great now we just do our thing now we know that it's a JSON object so basically this is a JSON object right and I'm going to do uh, basically I'll do a JSON object uh, JSON object equal to new JSON object and pass it the body so we have the JSON object now it's not happy it needs to be surrounded by a try catch block try catch block excellent so I have the JSON body now from that JSON body I need to go into uh, this list right because inside the list I need to parse each one of these objects as a JSON object right okay good so now I need to go to a list so this is a JSON array JSON array I'll call it for example the JSON lists right? this is an array I can call it for example the lists array here is that lists array I could call it for example array lists something like that and then I'll do my for I and I'm going all the way over the JSON array JSON array list dot length right length so basically here and then I'll get a JSON object so each time I come in I get a JSON uh, JSON list uh, object uh, equal to JSON array list get object at I and then here I can get a gift list so basically I can do a gift list something like this and I'm gonna pass it the JSON object that I received so that gives me that parses everything because you see we already included the parsing of whatever happens inside here there is another for loop that goes in and parses the parses the items so you have items right we are able here we are here right we got this item we passed it in and then uh, sorry we got gift we are at lists we got that gift list and then we are inside the gift list we passed this information to the constructor here and then inside the constructor we go into the items and go from there so basically that does it for us and then we do uh, this dot uh, or uh, gift lists dot add right so that's how we add it and before we start anything we'll say gift lists dot clear just to clear everything inside because we want to be calling this method and then here uh, get activity dot run on UI thread new and runnable and then here we're going to notify the adapter okay before I proceed I will put a breakpoint here and run this app again and I want to see if I'm parsing things correctly so I put a breakpoint, I run into debug mode, and I'm waiting until the debugger hits that location. Perfect. And then I look at JSON uh, gift lists, and it shows me I have two gift lists. That's great. I'm able to capture the name of the gift list, the number of items, and the, G the, the ID. And then I have the total count, the total cost, the total count. And then here is the items inside each item I have the count of the item the URL the name the PID uh, the product ID and the price per item and you see here it's changed into a double now and I have the count and that's the first item and the second item also here's the second item perfect so I'm able to parse I'm good here so now what I have to do is to go ahead and create my adapter right so basically now let's have to see this is a recycler view I'll create an adapter perfect so I have all what I need I create the adapter. I'll call it, for example, the gift, the gift list adapter uh, extends recycler view dot adapter, and I know it needs a view holder class uh, gift list view holder, and that's the view holder I'm going to use here. Paste it here. Options enter. Import the class. 
and then basically I'm going to implement the methods which are these three methods perfect I know that the number of counts is uh, gift list dot size here is that perfect and I know that there is a layout that is provided for me for the gift list so basically if you look here gift list item here is that and here is the gift list item here it is okay it's called list item gift list okay good perfect so basically I, I like to use binding so I'll do gift list gift list item gift or oh, item list 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 item gift list binding and I'll call it for example item binding equals to this all right so gift list dot inflator comma parent comma false right all right so I have that here and I'm going to adapt ad update the um, the holder where is that copy this from here and we'll change this here and have a local variable and we'll say item binding dot get root item binding okay we're good here and then basically what we're going to return is a new gift list with item binding perfect and here we're going to do a public void setup ui and i'm going to send you a gift list item right so basically i know that you're going to send me a gift list item so i'm going to have a gift list m gift list right i'm going to send me a gift list item uh gift list and i'll say uh, this dot m gift list equal to gift list right so basically here that's the item you are sending me yes and then basically i just need to display it so basically if you look here i'm displaying the name total items and count so basically i am going to do uh, item binding dot uh, text view uh, name dot set text to gift list dot get name similarly the total cost and similarly the total number of items now so the total cost is um dollar and then the total cost so basically i'm just going to do something like here here it is and then we'll say number of items something like this all right here we are this matches exactly what they need so basically two and two items and so on so i'm done with that so this setup ui where do we call it here it is uh, holder dot setup UI and you send it the item that you want to display. So that's basically it. So now the delete we'll look at it in a little bit, but I am done with this. I can go ahead and create the adapter. Adapter equal new git list adapter. Or I don't have to create it here. I will create it in um, in on view created before I call before I call get the list. So I'll say adapter equal to this. And then binding equal to this, but also the recycler view requires set uh, layout manager new new linear. This is also boilerplate code. Get context or get activity here. Very good. So that is setting up the recycler view, setting up the adapter, telling it to go get the lists. And if we run this, you should be able to see. We should be able to see the list populate. Okay, it's not because after we're getting the list, we need to notify the adapter. See here, we need to notify the adapter. So I'll do adapter dot notify data set has changed, and then when you run it, the list will reload. All right, so here we are, and here we have the list. Perfect. So now um, the second part where we want to delete. So basically, in order to delete, what I'm going to do is I am going to copy what we have here, and I'm going to paste it. And I'm going to say delete, delete gift list. And basically, I just need to see what information. Maybe I send you the gift list that I am, the gift list that I would like to delete, right? So basically, I'm going to send you the, the gift list that I would like to delete. And if we look at deleting a gift list, basically, here is the URL, copy. All right, here it is. And it needs a header, which I have already included. There is a body. The body is it's a post request so i have to figure out how to send the parameter in the post request and it has one parameter which is gid perfect so now let me go in and see how to set it up so i need gid so i go back to this and i'm posting to a form right with a parameter and here is basically what you do this is how you post to a form i copy that from here and this is also not new if you look at your code you will see that the login 
the login fragment has that code so basically you see here the login fragment this is how we do the login so i can copy it from here even so i can copy that stuff from here and go back here and we go here and paste it right and then basically i don't need i need this one okay here we are and i'm gonna put it here and i don't need this request anymore i have the request now i need a gid which is the group id and then this is going to be from the gift list dot get gid cool so i have that here all right here we are we're good we have the request set up we have the the form set up uh, and the request is being made response and all that interesting stuff i don't need all of this i can parse the response if i need to right but i don't think i need the, to parse the response all what i will do is if everything is successful what i will do is i i don't need the body but anyhow i all what i need to do is i need to tell it to reload the list so basically get gift lists again when if everything is good the document says that if you delete once you delete i want you to reload the list from the server and that's what i will do is that i will trigger the delete and then when the delete is done so basically i don't need this anymore when the delete is done i will just tell it get me the gift lists and get me the gift lists calls another api call so now how do i call this delete so basically in order to call the delete it's going to happen in the adapter so basically inside the view holder here so basically i will do here i'll say item binding dot set dot um, delete image view dot set on click listener new on click listener and basically i'm just going to say delete gift lists and pass it the gift list and that's going to call this calls the api and then it will trigger uh, deleting it so let's run it again all okay, right so we are here and here we are i click on this and it did it now if i run the app again you will see i'm getting data from the server and you will see that the, the lists will only have two two of them and we're good to go all right so now what happens when you click on one of these gift lists so basically i need to update the interface so that i could say uh, void go to uh, check uh, gift list right go to gift list check or gift list details go to gift list details and i'm gonna can, can send for example a gift list gift list a gift list or something that's when you want to go somewhere right so basically i can finalize that also here i'll say item binding dot get root item 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 binding dot get root dot set on click listener new on click listener oops sorry new on click listener and we're good here and i could just say go to um your list now i know that if i did this i need to update in the main activity i need to implement this method all right here it is and i'll implement it later all right so we have that gift lists so now i'm done with what parts here i'm done with mainly the delete and i'm done with these two parts so basically i'm done with uh, parsing the json displaying the list items i'm done also with the deleting delete api which is very straightforward now uh, i know go to part two which is the creation part so basically part two of this uh, assignment is to create a gift list so now i just need to go to the create a gift list so let's go here and see what happens when you add a new it takes you here and you enter a name and you're getting a list of products now the list of products is here so here is the product list it's a get request so i can copy and leverage some stuff that i already have and it returns a list of products all right so uh, something like this we'll look a little uh, at it in a little bit uh, and you see here that these are products and it uses different so it has image url it has a price and so on so now what i will do i will change this such that i will refactor rename this to i'll call it a gift list product all right so i'm refactoring it everywhere so now it's called gift list product right here it is here is that mm -hmm. i just change it into gift list product so this is the products that are inside the gift list all right and then there is another api that gives me products so now what i will do is i'll create a new uh, java class i'll call it uh, product right and then basically let me see what it has so it has these values here it is all right here we are these are the products cool and what i will do is i leverage some stuff that i did before so basically i know now that i can do something like this and i know the price here is going to be a double right so i need it to be a double so i'll say a double price and i'll have an integer count also 
so now what i'm having why am i having an integer count because you see here if i load the list of products i need also to maintain their count right so basically i'll just have a count and i'll initialize this to zero and maybe the price i'll initialize it to 0.0, .0 just in case here and i'll create an empty constructor so i'm repeating myself again this is stuff that i did before i'll copy that also from here and this is going to be the json object that i'm going to receive all right so i'll call it json that's the json object i'm receiving and then basically uh this is all boilerplate code that we did before where the product id is an integer the name is an in sorry is a string 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 the price i will do the same thing i did before uh try and uh, catch number format exception here it is print stack trace if you need to and then we go here and i'm gonna get it as a uh, a string and then i'm gonna double dot value of and here we are so now i just change it into a double so i have now done the parsing for the product so basically if you look here there is a product and it follows exactly the same approach that we did before yani, there isn't much difference here so anyhow so here it is and basically i go in i get the pid the name the image url and the price perfect so i have that just set up some getters and setters and we're good to go so now when you create a product i'll just it initializes gets the price initializes now here i could just say um if things are wrong i just say price equal to zero or something all right so we're good with the product now if we go to the next screen which is the gift list uh, create create gift list fragment perfect here it is that now i will need to get uh, this receives no parameters right it's not going to receive any parameters i need to create an array list of product and i call it m products equal new array list and so i have the products here and uh, now basically what i'm going to do is very similar to what we did before is i'm going to uh, go in and do the same code that we had for gift list fragment but instead of getting lists i'm going to get products so uh, what i will do is i'll copy the stuff from here go here and paste it so now here i'm just instead of get gift lists i'm going to say get product there's get products where's that there's get products i go back here this is the url that i'm interested in control c and control v and this is where i'm going to call it get products right and the authorization header is the same uh, on failure blah 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 and then basically here we have instead of this we are using m products here's that m products we clear we go in we get the body and we look at it we are interested in products this is just an object and inside it there is just an array called products so basically same story just an object and inside it there is a just an array called products right and i could just go in and say refractor uh, rename i could call it array of products all right here we are we are looping we create a get adjacent object and instead of this we're going to say product here's that oops and we're going to say in the, the json uh, product object if we right here's that and here's this and then we'll just say m products dot add and the product here is that so we're done here and then there is an adapter that we need to notify right so basically that's what we're going to do and we're good to go so now what i will do is i'll just comment out this put a breakpoint here and this method is being called now let's run it in debug mode and see let's get in and let's see if we're able to get the product here we are debug mode i click on add new loaded the products and here is m products have six products inside it and count is zero image url is captured name is captured pid is captured price is captured for the first one and the second one also so i already done done with the parsing of the products now i want to display them all right perfect so what i'm going to do is i am either i can copy paste the adapter or i like to build the adapter because there is a steps straightforward class i'll call it the products adapter extends uh, recycler view dot array the adapter and i need the view holder class uh, product view holder and copy that from here paste it here options enter import here's that and then it needs to implement the methods here are the methods all right so we go here 
and you go here implement the methods here are the methods the number is m product dot dot size here's that okay and what we're going to do here is let's do the binding item list uh, list list item product binding and binding equal to this and basically i'm not say going to say binding i'm going to say item binding just to avoid problems here all right let's copy this from here and i'm going to change the constructor to accept this put this here and it's going to be item binding dot dot uh, get root all right and then this dot item binding equal item binding sorry item binding and we're good here all right good so that's this and we'll say new view holder item binding and we're good to go all right and then here in the view holder also we do a private method we say uh, void and set up ui good so now what are we going to do is we need to show the product name the price the count and the image perfect so this is the text view product name text view product cost cost per item so we'll say get 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 price so that's the cost right and then uh, we also have name count so item binding dot text view uh, count dot set text to uh, we'll say something like this but there's no items so we need to change it into a string be careful string dot value of and we get the count so uh, product dot get count all right here we are and then there is an image view there is an image view for minus and plus we'll add that in a little bit uh, minus and uh, image view plus and then the image view icon to display the icon is also very easy i'll use picasso so if i go back here i'll do say picasso android here we are here it is it's already included so here is i copy this from here to here and we're good to go so here is that options enter import and if you look at the the product each product has an image url that's coming in so basically all what i will do is say uh, product dot image url and basically here we'll do um, uh, image uh, item binding binding dot uh, image view icon here it is that's where I want to load it and we're good to go so basically set up UI where do we call it we call it here in the on bind I uh, will do uh, something like this yes we get the product and then we we'll holder set up UI and we're good to go so now I, I didn't implement any of the clicks but let's see uh, just step by step right so here we are we have the, the adapter setup go all the way up we go here and say adapter and then basically we know that we need to set up the adapter in get products we need to notify the adapter that it has set has changed so we'll do that here all right i did that already okay now what i need to do is set up the uh, recycler view so binding dot recycler view dot uh, set layout manager new layout manager get context and then binding create the adapter set the adapter to this and then get products all right so now if we refresh this and run it let's see what happens okay here we are we go create a, add a new one and then boom we have our products good so we have our products what i would like to do is then how to display the overall cost so now it's very easy also to display the overall cost basically the overall cost is the cost of uh, all these products all the selections that the user have made so i'll just create a, a method here a private uh, private and i'll call it void uh, setup or display compute uh, over all cost right and then whenever anything changes and you will just going to do that right so now d uh, compute the overall cost how will i do that i'll just go in and loop over for each product product in products right for each product in m products then compute the overall cost so that's very easy so you just say hey let's say we have a global variable we call it for example a uh, uh, double overall cost something like that and let's say it's equal to 0, 0.0 to start off right so basically when you ask me to compute it i'll just say overall cost equal to 0, 0.0 and then basically the cost will be equal to overall cost equal to 
uh, for each product is equal to the overall cost plus uh, plus the multiplication of the product times its count that's the overall cost when you are done we'll just say um, uh, binding oops, sorry uh, binding dot uh, text view overall cost dot set text to uh, overall cost and we can also do interesting stuff where I could just uh, uh, format the overall cost to uh, let's say two decimal places so we can do something like um, uh, overall cost variable uh, double to uh, here so basically what we could do is we could say format uh, we can format it yeah, if you want to right so basically we can do something like that uh, to places to be like for example 22.85 something like that uh, 0.99 something like this so now we can go and search on how to do this and so on right or you could do string dot format I think it's called string dot format here it is the overall cost that's the overall cost it's gonna look something like this all right so basically it will have a dollar sign and it will take care that it's two decimal up to two decimal places perfect so now we're done here and we're good to go so now we are able to do compute overall cost so when do we compute the overall cost when we get all the products let's say we know that when you get all the products through the api the overall cost is zero anyway but anyway i will call it here i don't think i need to call it here but anyway i will call it it will zero everything okay now um what i will also do is well when will i call it so basically if you run it it will get called that's perfect now when you update the let's say we go here let's say we add basically this one is just the user clicks on the plus sign i need to add the one here and update this so now what i'm going to do is when you click on the plus sign what i'm going to do is i'm just going to go in and say increment the count for the product so basically i can go into the model of the product okay and uh, you see here there is get i could say increment i could say public uh, void increment uh, count this does this and then I could say public decrement count and I can do some checks here sanitization check to see if count is greater than zero then I'm going to decrement perfect is greater than zero then I'm going to decrement otherwise it's not going to decrement so it is very good mm -hmm. so now I'll just say m products dot m uh, we have the product we didn't store it so we need to store this product because we're going to use it so we'll do is a product product okay product is m product and then here we'll say m product equal to product right and then basically when you click we'll just say m product dot uh, this is the minus so we'll decrement count and this is the plus we'll just a m product decrement count done so we are incrementing or decrementing so this is increment and then basically all we're going to do is we'll say adapter dot notify that or so we'll, we are inside the adapter anyway so notify data has changed and similarly here also notify the data set has changed by notifying the data set has changed uh, it just reloads the whole list again and recomputes and what I need to do is I could say compute compute or over overall cost here and also compute the overall cost here so now when we can refresh this look at the running device again here we are add new and when you add plus you see the number going up when you click minus you see the number going minus and then we click on minus again nothing happens this is one this is one and this is here we are so yeah we are able to add these items so now let's go and look at what is remaining so now when we look here you'll see that uh, display the products the plus and minus sign and overall cost is done the submit perfect so now let's look at the submit so if you he look here all we have to do this is a what a get or a, a this is a get or a post it's a it's a it's a post request add a new and it needs two parameters the name and the product list ids so these are the ids and it's common separated list of the ids perfect did i do any post requests yes i did the delete so if you go to here the delete gift lists was one so i'll copy this from here and i'm going to paste it here my plan is to paste it here uh, here we are 
when you click on submit we're going to use that so basically i'm going to paste it here i'm going to say uh submit add new gift list and i'm going to send you some stuff that you need but let's say let's set up the the handlers for this so basically we are here we'll do binding dot uh, button submit dot set on click listener new button submit and here we are now what i need to check to see is string name equal to binding dot edit text edit text gift list name right and we'll set to see if name is empty then i'm just going to show a toast uh get activity uh, please enter name All right and then else what i'm going to do also i need to figure out if the overall cost is zero or no right so i need to make sure that you have selected some products right and i am not also calculating the count to account for zeros so what i could do is i could do also double overall count just to see if there's an item that has zero prices free right or it's an integer say int double overall count and then whenever i am uh, calculating the um, whenever i'm calculating the overall cost i can just update it also here so i'll do this equal to zero and then basically as you count the products so it's equal to yeah i can come in here and say overall count at least you have one product so i can check based on the size of the product list no i can't so i need to make sure that there is some kind of account so basically this is uh, overall count equal to overall count plus the product count right so did you pick the count or not because this m products will always have all the list of products that you retrieve through the api right so here it is so now i can do a simple check here where is the submission here i could check to see else if the overall count is uh, equal to zero right i'm going to show also a toast right so i'd say a toast uh, overall co count all right so please add products to the list and then otherwise if everything is good i will just say uh, submit gift list right that's what i'm going to do and i'm going to send you the name let's say it's string i'll send you the name right so just i'll pass on the name to here so this is going to be a string name right and also let's compute the list let's compute the list of uh, products and their count right or the list of product ids right product okay ids all right so now how i'm going to do this um you see here you are you have a list of products right and you want to create uh you want to add them based on the count the count is uh, dictates how many how many of this these products you're going to add so what i'm going to do is i'm going to have an array list of ids i'll call it string okay i'm going to call it ids equal to new array list so this is an array list of ids okay these are the ids that i'm interested in adding all right and then i'll go for each product right and basically what i'm going to do is that for each product if the count is greater than zero i'm not going to add this id only once but i need to know how many times to add the id so basically what i'm going to do is i'll go and do a loop right or i don't even need the check here so i'm going to do a for i here over the product dot count uh get count right and then based on the count i'll say ids dot add product dot get pid now adding them here makes it very easy because i now can join so basically i already have the ids they are all inside here i could do string dot join right and then basically uh, uh ids by id and these are the ids right? these are my ids all right so i'm going to pass you the name and the list of ids all right so basically i uh, let me put it in a string so that you know what i'm talking about here uh product ids here's that and then i'm going to pass the product id so basically here and then you will have string uh product ids and we're good to go and basically i'm going to do the same thing here product ids now i use this approach which is very straightforward you know and it takes care of i loop over all the products and then based on the count i'm going to add them to the list of ids and then this operation just concatenates them with a delimiter with the limiter is the comma and we're good to go right 
all right so now let's have a look at uh now here it is there is a name and product ids so there is a name and product ids here it is that so there are two product ids comma product ids and then there is a name name and the parameter is name we're good here now we need the url use that it's a post request we know that that's why we are uh, performing the operation like this to create a form body and we're good to go so that's this now if everything goes well we added it now we can check so let's have a look at the process so now if everything goes well we need to pop the back stack and go back right so basically we need to say done so we'll have here uh, void done uh, creating gift list and then void cancel cancel creating gift list right and uh, we have another button I think which is somewhere here gift lists create gift list all right here we are cancel I think this is the cancel one let's go in cancel and cancel has a bad name but anyway you could use the same name if you want but anyway so here it is and this is when submitting and I'll do binding dot button dot cancel cancel dot set on click listener new on click listener and we'll just cancel and then when everything is said and done I'll just say m listener dot done creating gift list and we're good to go and both cancel and done do the same thing they just pop the back stack we just need to go back now it's not going to be happy we just need to implement the method here they are and basically we're just popping the back stack in both cases right here is that one and here's the other one we're popping the back stack now let's run it again and see all right so if we run it we should be able to create a new gift list so let's go in add a new one let's say uh, my test let's say when I click on submit now it's saying see you don't have enter a name let's say uh, first gift uh, list and then I click on submit it says that you need to add a product to the list let's add one here and let's add one here one from each all right here it is one from each okay or let's say add two from let's add two from this guy and two from this guy so it's and make you make this guy zero and zero three items only so I have three I added three two one two and it's total of five items right and this is the total price submit and you can see here total price five items cool so we're able to add <laughs> yes so we're able to add straightforward and this is so basically if we look back here we're able to add we submitted and life is good so now let's see what is the last part last part display a list of overall costs correctly fine we can do all of that side we can leverage a lot of the code that we wrote before which is the last screen the last screen is when you click on one of these it goes to the next screen it goes to the details so i need to pass the gift list uh, across so basically if you look here there is a gift list fragment and we are going to send it uh, a gift list so basically this is the gift list fragment <coughs> And we need to pass it a gift list. So what I will do and the the code that we need here is not listed. So I'll create a new, let's say, fragment. I need the <coughs> new instance code, right? So I'll just say create a blank fragment here. And I'm gonna copy the new instance code here. You know that this code that we have here, control X. And I'm going to go to the gift list fragment here and edit. There's that. And this is going to return a gift list fragment and you're going to send me a gift list and this is a gift list here's that and then basically we need to make it serializable right so go back here and we scroll all the way up this implements serializable okay good here it is and then basically we uh, put serializable go back to the blank fragment i need this one okay here we are I'm gonna delete this gift list fragment. I just added it so I can have the same uh, parameter names and so on. And this is the gift list, right? Copy that, paste it here. You have the gift list, put serializable, org, and gift list. We're good here. And this is the gift list fragment. Okay, here we are. 
okay we have that and then we also need the on create there is an on create that needs to be there here we are and here's the on create and we need to have a variable to hold the gift list so we'll say and this is going to be the m gift list right here we are and that is here get serializable okay serializable and we don't need this anymore here we are org and we good we need to cast here we are so we it's cast to a string why get so this is gift list this is a gift list here we are so we're good so now we don't need this blank fragment i just because we it didn't seem that we had the delete it anyway and this one also delete it. so now we are going to send it the gift list right we're going to send the gift list all the way here now where is that in the main activity here right so basically i need the same approach i'm going to push put pop the box put it on the back stack but instead of uh, create i'm going to do gift list fragment dot new instance and i'm going to send it the gift list all right here we are and add it to add to the back stack now if i look back at that screen what does that screen display it, it basically displays the uh, the gift list mm -hmm. and it plays the name of it the total cost so and I, I need the function to calculate the total cost and similarly i need to display something very very similar to what i displayed before it's exactly the same adapter right so i can leverage the same adapter if i need to right i can copy it and paste it and and then struggle with all the the uh, library implementation and so on but i will use the same code you know i'll literally use the same code right okay cool so in order to do that uh let's see i think let's have a look at create let's say we split right left and i'm looking at the one i'm gonna code is the one here i'm gonna move this guy here close this okay so this is the gift list fragment here we are I need the function let's before I do anything here do I have access to the token yes I need also an array list of products so I'm gonna do that here here's the array list of products right and basically this array list of products when you do the on create so what is on create here the on create view or let's say on create what I'm going to do is I have access to the list at that stage and what I'm going to do is that I'm going to say m products equal to m uh, gift list. Oh, it's not the same. It's not the same kind of product. Okay, good. So let's see. So what I'm going to do is this is not the product. This is the gift list product. Here it is. Okay, and that's what m products is here. So now when we go here, we'll say m products equal to get products, get items. Right. That's the the list of products that i would like to display for that gift list right and what i'm going to do also i'm going to copy the calculate uh, overall cost right so basically i'm going to create an adapter right very similar to this one right so i'm going to copy all of that stuff from here to here right and paste it somewhere here so i have the adapter i know it doesn't look that good because there is a lot of errors that are showing up right now this adapter will use the you have to be a little bit careful it will use um here and product view holder okay and similarly okay product adapter and similarly product adapter Okay, and now it's not happy for some reason. Yeah, here we are. That's the problem of uh, cut and paste. You know, okay, that's one here. So how do you get stuff here in product size? This is gonna be the gift gift list product, right? And then basically we need to change we need to change the uh, view holder such that it uses uh, this kind of product instead, right? Right. So here it is and then similarly uh this product here get cost i think it's called get cost get uh price per item 
where's that and then we just need the decrement and increment side of things but this is not what we are going to do here so I'm going to comment out or remove this code here because this part you are talking to an API right so basically we're going to be talking to an API and then similarly compute so we need the overall cost so uh, where is that here the create there's an overall cost involved that we added here so we have an adapter and overall cost so we'll do that where did we put it here so we have a product adapter products adapter overall cost and so on all right so for each gift list product as in m products get price per item time product cost overall cost and we're good to go so we are good to go in calculating the cost and we also have the adapter setup it's exactly the same adapter we just change things a little bit right and now all what we have to do is just set up the adapter so on view created here's that mm -hmm. and we'll do something like this recycler view we'll do binding recycler view dot set layout manager new linear layout get context and we're good to go all right here we are we're good to go and this is our recycler view and we can also do this thing here if we want need to i don't think we need to but we can do it like this to the set up the m products and we're good to go you know and yeah yeah and think also what we also need to do is set up the counter so basically compute compute the overall cost right all right and run it so here we are Uh, we click on one of them it goes here and we're displaying the overall cost and we're displaying the items correctly even the count is being displayed correctly right so everything is done uh, correctly here now the the plus and minus what we want to do is we want to increment it here and then also call an api right so basically if you look here there is add item and then there is remove item right so basically there is an add item function and then there is a remove item function cool and they are post requests perfect so now what did we do as post requests the delete so let's go back here to the main the first fragment and we had the delete so here is that again copy all right and let's copy uh let's copy this one first Control c and here's the gift list fragment and let's minimize this here is the first api call right i'll call it let's build the add and then we can build the the remove right the other api where is that cool here we are we're good to go this is the delete mm -hmm. and basically i'm going to copy the url here Control c and Control v right and then what it needs it needs in the body the gid which is the the id of the group the id of the gift card gift list and the pid which is the product that you want to add so here is the remove and then the GID and the PID. Okay, good. And this is going to be the PID. Get. All right, good. So now we can send it here. We can have two strings: string GID, string PID, and these are what's being sent here. Okay, GID and PID. Okay. We're good, 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 good. And then we're gonna look at what happens when you remove and so on and go from there so we are good delete um, delete the list and let's see we'll do this uh, this is the you remove so basically this is uh, remove item or remove product remove one uh, product uh from uh list right there's something like this and then similarly we're going to do the other one but let's just do the remove first and then we do the add okay cool here we are we're going to remove item right and then we'll do that okay we can add, do the add first so basically the add first is this one this is the url copy that and paste it here Control v add all right add comes lowercase a add one product uh, to list right or add product to list, list 
add product to list then the other one is going to be removed so here it is now where do we do this it's uh, in the in the view holder here when you click what we're going to do is we need to uh, the product we need to decrement the count for that product but before we do that what I'm going to do is I'm going to check to see this is we're incrementing right so let's do the incrementing side of things here what I'm going to do is I'm going to do if uh, I'm going to do um, uh, m product dot uh, I didn't have uh, the uh, the uh, increment and decrement functions here so where is that here product no the gift list product I can also have increment and decrement functions uh, public increment and then uh, public decrement right something like that okay increment count decrement count i'll just do increment m product dot increment count right that's the incrementing part and then i cannot find data set as changed calculate the overall cost and at the same time also i can do um uh, call right I can call the add product to list right now I'm not it wasn't in uh, required in this assignment to do any uh, validation or to pause the clicking of the button while you are doing that I can do that you know by um, triggering uh, it to uh, having a global variable telling it that you are doing an update so that you don't click again I can do that uh, but anyway, it does it wasn't required in the document, so I'm not gonna worry about it. So now when you click on the plus sign, you will see that it will It should increment. So now how do we check? Let's see we add a new one. Let's say I'm going to remove to look at this guy and It has one item from each. Let's bump up this number Okay, bump up this number also And I'm gonna click on the back sign uh, and let's go back Okay Now it has five items. It has three one and one let's add more of this and i'm gonna go back it has now eight six of this one uh, two one and one so let's make this guy two make this guy also two go back it has now 10 items so the ad is uh, is is working and you see when i go back it reloads the list you see when i am when i go back it reloads the list and that is coming in from the api you know the api is uh let me show you so let me delete this one and I go here and I get my lists send that you see that now six two two right so now let's make it six three it's six four three four three and I'm gonna go back if you go look at it here and ca call the API six four three so it is working the the incrementing side of the world is working perfect now the decrementing side is also similar so now we go here see when you are when you are adding we're updating the count and actually calling the api so if you go back and then you click on it again it's the same thing perfect so now the decrementing side i'm just going to copy this from here to here from here to here and we're going to decrement count but we we're going to check if um m product dot get count is greater than zero then we're going to go ahead otherwise we're not going to do it right okay here we are there's this and then add to list instead of add to list we're going to remove from list so I'm going to copy this paste it here I'm going to call it to remove from list and basically I am going to call the API which is the uh, remove item control C and here is control V go back and this is what we're going to do when you click on the the minus all right cool let's run this again here we are click on the minus sign one two three four one okay i'll go back click here it says one click this zero go back all right good all right go back click on it okay and go back it's working so now the cancel button i didn't implement i'll implement it now but you could see that we are done with this just, uh, we can just do avoid uh, um, um, we're done with a gift list and basically that's what we could add in here just to go back all right 
binding dot uh, button back dot set on click listener new on click listener m listener dot done with gift list and then the main activity <coughs> go here here implement the method pop the back stack and we're good to go so basically if you look at it we are done also with the last part the last part allows uh, asked us to do what display the list call the plus or minus sign correctly call the api to refresh the list once changed displayed overall cost correctly so we're good so we are good that go here you can make it zero go back and it's showing zeros right we can delete the whole list add a new one the, some test list all right here we are add here add here and add here submit click that and we're good to go so we're going to add some more here some more here some more here and we can go back and it shows three 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 let's say two 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 go back here we are two 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 all right so that was straightforward you know it, there was some manipulation that had to be done but again a lot of the recycler view code is reusable i could have created a, an adapter that is outside but then i have to create all these interfaces and so on and then i will be able to share the adapter uh, among the at least the this screen and the create you know the new they are look very similar the adapters are very similar but anyhow please let me know if you have any questions thank you